Hi, welcome to the walkthrough of the kidney. Today we're going to look at the flat panel model of the kidney in a couple of different sections. So here we're going to look at the gross anatomy of the kidney. So the whole kidney as a large structure and point out the individual parts. And then we'll start to look at the deeper histological components um, in another part of this flat panel model. And we'll go even deeper and look at the functional part of the kidney. So I wanna start by looking at the different layers of the kidney and identifying some of the structures associated with them. So first, the kidney is about 150 grams in terms of its weight, and it measures about 11 centimeters long. So obviously we're looking at a model and that's not the case when we're looking at something this large. But in the human, that's what we would find. The outermost layer of the kidney is called the capsule, the renal capsule. It's fibrous and it encloses the whole kidney. So it distinguishes this as an organ. So this goes all the way around. Now that comes in and envelops a portion called the hilum. So the hilum is this slit right here and that's the opening into this inner portion of the kidney. At the hilum, at that slit, we are going to find the urinary structures, blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatics. So here we've got the blood vessels, the renal artery and the renal vein. We've got the ureter right here, the urinary pelvis. <clears throat> So a kidney is shaped like a bean, but when we have it in this frontal section, it almost looks like a backwards letter C. And so right here is where we would visualize that letter C. This space all in here is called the renal cavity. In the renal cavity, we see lots of blood vessels and we also see the urinary um, structure. So the structures that are going to allow for urine to flow away from the kidney. There are two divisions to the kidney in terms of um, layers. This outer layer that's covered directly by the renal uh, capsule is called the cortex. And part of the cortex actually goes down in towards that renal cavity and those are called columns cortical columns, renal columns. And so the renal columns actually divide that next layer, which is called the medulla or the medullary layer. And you can see that the columns separate these structures, which look like pyramids, and that's what they're called, renal pyramids. The renal pyramids at one end where the apex is, it comes to a point and it's called a papilla, the renal papilla. It faces this renal sinus and it's gonna drain urine into this structure right here called a renal calyx. So that's a minor calyx. And when we have many of the minor all together, so here's one and here's one, and they converge, they come together, they form a major calyx. So this is a minor, minor here, minor here, minor here, and where these two converge, that's a major calyx. So we've got a major calyx here, we've got one here, and then this whole space in here is the renal pelvis, and that's gonna allow for that urine to flow into the urinary um, uh, pelvis and out through the ureter. Although the primary function of the kidneys is excretion, they play more roles than we commonly realize. They filter the blood and they're going to excrete those toxic metabolites. 
they're going to regulate blood volume, pressure, and osmolarity by regulating water input. They also regulate your electrolyte and your acid-base balances. They're going to secrete hormones, regulate calcium, clear some hormones and drugs from your blood. So again, another role in terms of its ability to filter out waste products. They're going to detoxify free radicals. And in extreme cases of starvation, they'll help to support blood glucose levels by synthesizing glucose from amino acids. So the kidneys are filters of the blood and all things that are in the blood. And so we need to look at the renal circulation and see how it is that it's going to function as these little filters. So I want to walk you through the renal circulation right now. So of all of the blood that you have in the body, which again, our range is going to be four liters to six liters. And so if we break that down between males and females, males are on the higher end of that and females are on the lower end of that. But your body is going to um, filter about a quarter of that, maybe even a little bit more per minute, per minute. So one of those liters per minute is going to be filtered. So that's pretty important um, because as we are very active and our cells are very active, there's lots of metabolites that end up in the blood and it's the role of the kidneys to filter out those metabolites and um, discharge those into the urine. So we're going to start with the renal artery. The renal artery enters into the kidney via um, the aorta. So this is a branch off of the aorta, the renal artery, and it's going to give way to what is called a segmental artery. So the segmental arteries follow along the renal calyces. And then from there, it's going to go up and along the columns, and those are called the interlobar arteries. So it's following that renal column. Then they're gonna arc over top of the renal pyramids. And so the name of that vessel changes now, and it's called an arcuate artery. You can see how there are very small vessels that basically radiate off of the arcuate artery. And so those are called cortical radiate arteries. So they're located in the cortical region and they're radiating off of the arcuate. These are going to lead to some of the smallest arteries in here and they're arterioles. So can't hardly see them on here, but we will look at them um, on the microscopic model, but they're associated with these little teeny tiny yellow or white dots that you see here. And they are going to be called the afferent arterioles. So from the afferent arterioles, these little tiny dots that I just mentioned to you, there is a ball of capillaries inside of them called glomeruli. And a single glomerulus is located in this renal corpuscle. And so it's a capillaries that are encapsulated. They're enclosed in there. And so that's where the filtration is going to take place. Then blood is going to move out of the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole and the peritubular capillaries or the vasorecta. And those again are microscopic structures, so I'll point those out to you on another model. And then we're gonna to go to the cortica, cortical radiate arteries. So that's these right here, or I'm sorry, cortical radiate veins. So now we're, we're going to bring blood away from the kidney those are going to dump their blood into the arcuate vein, going into the 
interlobar vein. And that interlobar vein, it's going to drain all the way down into the renal vein. So note here, there is no segmental vein, okay? So from the renal artery, we had a segmental, and then we had the interlobar. Well, when we go backwards, we have arcua vein, interlobar vein, going directly into the renal vein. This is another one of the flat panel models, and now we're getting a little bit deeper, more to the microscopic level, and I can point out some of the vasculature to you now that we weren't really able to see on that gross anatomy model, that much larger model. So let's start with um, the interlobar artery, and that comes up and it's gonna arc over the renal pyramid. And so that's the arcuate artery, and that's gonna give rise to the cortical radiate arteries. And from there, we're going to start to see now the afferent arterial. So those little lines that are going to these circles, which are called the renal corpuscles. So again, those are called the afferent arterial. And then that is going to lead into the inside of that renal corpuscle and it's a ball of capillaries. So that is called the glomerulus. Now, as the blood is filtered, it's, it can't stay in there, it has to move out. So now we're gonna move out through the veins. And so if I go out through here, it looks like it's still arterial it's an efferent arterial because it's still considered an artery. And then we're gonna give rise to a couple of different capillary structures. So notice that we've got this bed of capillaries here, which is called the vasorecta. And so we've got this going down into the medulla, into that renal pyramid. So we've got these, okay, both of those is the vasorecta. And then we also have what are called peritubular capillaries. So these are capillaries that are gonna surround the tubes and it's not really well shown on this particular model, but they're gonna extend and just go around each of these tubular like structures here. So we'll use another model to um, have a look at that a little bit better. From the vasorecta, the blood that is in here, this can drain into the, um, the arcuate vein, okay? And then that will go into the um, interlobar vein and go back to um, the renal vein, and the renal vein will drain into the inferior vena cava on its way back to the heart. Now we're gonna zoom in on our renal corpuscle. This is part of the functional unit of the kidney. So you've got a ball of capillaries on the inside of this renal corpuscle that's called the glomerulus. The glomerulus is surrounded by a capsule here. And so this is also called Bowman's capsule. And so that encloses this little bed of capillaries in this space because filtration is going to take place here. So when we were in our earlier chapter, chapter 20, and looking at vessels and the function of capillaries, we said that there are some capillaries that function solely in filtration and some that function solely in absorption. Well, these function in filtration. 
So these are the little tiny capillary beds that function to filter your blood of the toxins, the waste, the chemicals, the drugs, whatever things that is that the body needs to excrete in the urine. Blood is brought in through the afferent arterial. So we're entering in here. It's going to be filtered, okay? And so all of that um, blood that's filtered, any of the fluid is gonna end up in this space along with those waste products. And then as blood continues to move through, so those RBCs, it's going to exit by way of the efferent arterial. So notice that the afferent arterial is much larger than the efferent arterial. That's gonna be helpful because this will allow for a lot of blood to come in, but not so much to go out so fast, which means that we're gonna have a really nice pressure gradient in here that will support these capillaries in their job of filtering. Now I wanna spend some time looking at the nephron. That is our functional unit of the kidney in its entirety. And we're starting right here with the renal corpuscle. And when this structure filters out water, when it filters out electrolytes and waste products, all that fluid enters into this space. And at that time, it's called filtrate. So there's no RBCs that should come out of our capillaries. They're going to continue in circulation. But in here, we're gonna have fluid, electrolytes, uric acid, urea, nitrogenous waste, all kinds of things that the body will eventually get rid of. So where does that fluid, that filtrate go? The first place it's going to enter is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, proximal means close. So it's the tube that is close in proximity to our renal corpuscle, and it's the first tubule that receives the filtrate. 